Good afternoon again, everybody. This is Bart from MultirotorForums.com. We're continuing our review of the DJI NASA V2 flight control system for multirotor helicopters. Our review is sponsored by AerialMediaPros.com. They're a well-established DJI dealer here in the U.S., out on the West Coast, actually. So, this part of the video, we're just going to talk about the helicopter itself, uh, the helicopter that we used for the review just to establish a baseline so you have an understanding of what it was that we were flying uh, when we had the experiences that we're going to talk about. And uh, this particular helicopter is what I call an XY4. Uh, the frame is my own design. I've been flying this XY format for about two and a half years. Uh, this version of the frame is about six months old. But the reason I call it an XY, it's an X like a quad, but it's a Y. Uh, it's got spacing in the front like a Y copter, front and the back to be symmetrical. But the front is uh, 120 degrees apart like a Y-copter, so uh, the camera has a clear view out of the front between uh, the props and motors. So, for this build, uh, for the review, we're using Tiger MT2814-10 motors, that's uh, 770 kV. We're using Zor 125 props, these are the PJA props, uh, props that are made for nitro motors. I've used these quite a bit over the last couple of years. I like them a lot. Controlling the motors, we have uh, Hobbywing 40 amp uh, Platinum Pro ESCs with the stock Hobbywing firmware. They haven't been reflashed or anything like that. I'm flying today with uh, two 6,000 milliamp Turnigy Nanotech packs. Uh, there are, like I said, 6,000 milliamp. Uh, 4S packs, I believe they're 25 to 50 C rating for max discharge. And for the build, I'm using my trusty JR9503 9 channel radio and a Spectrum AR9000 receiver with uh, two satellites, one there and one there. Okay, so you have an idea of the helicopter we're using. Uh, the way it is right now, uh, it's only missing a video transmitter that'll go on this uh, boom out the back. And mounted on the front is a DJI H32D uh, brushless GoPro gimbal. And that's going to be the subject of a separate product review, but it's mounted to this helicopter. The helicopter, as you see it here, with the dome in place, and uh, minus the video transmitter, which I'll probably put on in the next week or two, uh, it weighs about 3.3, I'm sorry, 3 point, yeah, 3.3 kilograms, which is about seven and a quarter pounds. And uh, I just did a flight this evening. It's 23 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and I was using about 550 to 575 milli uh, mAh per minute. So with 12,000 milliamps available, uh, keeping 20% in reserve, that would be about 2,500. Uh, that 7,500 is good for about 15 minutes of flying. And uh, the flight I just did, I was whipping it around a little bit. So uh, that 550 to 600 milliamps per minute uh, is probably a pretty good number. Uh, once the temperatures get warm, uh, get a little warmer, that uh, battery consumption number will go up a little bit. Um, but for now, it's a good benchmark as we continue testing. So we're going to continue the video in just a second. We're going to talk about the installation of the different components. Uh, good practices, what our experiences were, and uh, we hope you find it helpful. Okay, so what we're looking at here uh, is the installation of the NASA V2 on the frame of my helicopter. And uh, I guess what you would call the DJI system is a modular system in that you have different components that all interact and uh, attach to each other via wires so that when it's all put together it makes up the entire flight control system. It takes into account power management, it takes into account uh, a way to communicate with the pilot, and uh, it also takes into account some uh, potential for expanding later on, and that's via the CAN bus system. So with my helicopter, uh, this frame has been developed mostly for microcopter and hoverfly. Mounting the NASA to it uh, wasn't such an impossible thing. Uh, you could see I have an arrow shaft here to point at things. Um, you could see underneath the NASA, you might not be able to see it, I could show it in photos during the review, but uh, I had to make a small 
uh, adapter to be able to mount the central unit, the Nazi unit, to the frame in a good way. And I've got a, a Velcro strap and some Velcro underneath as a vibration brake. And so it works very well if you could put it right in the middle. That's uh, the best case scenario to have the Nazi unit in the middle of the frame at the center of gravity point or over the center of gravity point. Uh, the closer you could also put it to the vertical center of gravity. In this case, the center of gravity in the vertical axis is actually about a quarter of an inch below the frame. So the NASA being up on top of the frame with the CG vertically being below the frame is not best case scenario, but so far it flies uh, pretty well with that. So, and knowing where that vertical center of gravity is is important because you have to figure out uh, the number of centimeters from the center of gravity up to the NASA. That's your uh, Z axis uh, measurement that you have to put in with the NASA assistant. So just to go over the components real quick, I've got the NASA unit itself, the IMU, in the middle of the frame. It's mounted on some Velcro for, like I said, a vibration break. That just means a soft layer between two hard surfaces so the vibration doesn't transfer through as easily. Um, it's being mechanically held in place with a Velcro strap. I wouldn't trust it just attached with Velcro or just attached with double-sided tape. I would want something, or you know, double-sided foam. Uh, I would want something physically wrapped over the top holding it so it can't break loose. Um, the next module would be the PMU, which is over here on the side. That has one, two, three, four, five wires coming out of it. Not these count as one for now, but that's five wires. That was a little bit more difficult to locate just because you have to take into account each wire has this wire, uh, this strain relief built into it, this handle or grip built into it. So you can't just pack it in the corner up against something because the wire needs room to go out and then around. So take that into account when you're planning your layout that uh, you have to give this some free space around it when you're picking where you're going to mount it. So these two wires go into the back of the NASA. The front of the NASA has the motor wires coming out. Another important component, you can see it down here, it's flashing away because I have the batteries connected. That's the remote LED. Okay and you want that mounted on the helicopter so that you could see it when you're flying because that's how the NASA unit communicates with the pilot. It flashes different colors, different patterns of LED uh, light to tell you what's happening. Okay, and as far as power distribution goes, that's a big topic for a lot of people when they're building their helicopters. Uh, for this build I have a wire harness. Uh, my ESC wires all come in into the center of the back area here. They go down into a hole and these wires uh, wrap around the heavier battery wires. They all get soldered into place, insulated real well, and then attached to the airframe down in here. And then attached in the back where they plug into my batteries. So I like to run two batteries. I've had uh, individual cells fail while helicopters were flying. So knowing that it could happen, having had it happen a couple of times, I much prefer having two packs. Okay, and then the last component, we've got four major components, the NASA, the PMU, the uh, remote LED, and then the last one, if you've purchased this option, is the GPS antenna. Okay, so that has to be up away from some of the electronics. You can see that if I turn it on its side, that it's on the stand provided by uh, DJI. I happened to cut one of the little legs off of it so it didn't stick out into space. I've got it right on the edge of my airframe and so far it works pretty well. The big thing with this uh, GPS puck, it needs to be offset. You don't want to just point it straight ahead. You want it to be offset left or right depending on magnetic declination it's called. And magnetic declination just means... Give me one second. Can you see this? Yeah. Magnetic declination just means that's the North Pole up on top of the Earth, right? Magnetic pole is over here. So that's the magnetic north. If I'm standing down here and I look at the true north and then I look at the magnetic north, there's this angle right there. 
that is declination. All right, and there's websites where you could find that, but if you're standing at your home spot where you're going to fly your helicopter and you have to look to the left to see magnetic north, like I do, then you want to take your NASA antenna puck, right? That would be straight ahead. That little arrow has to point to the magnetic north. So whichever way you have to look to see magnetic north, that's the way you turn the puck. So in my case, I turn it about 12 and a half degrees to the left because where I am in New Jersey, part of the United States, if I look straight at true north, the magnetic north is offset a little bit to the left and that's where the GPS puck has to be pointing. Okay, so we're gonna continue with the review. Um, I'd like to do a setup video separate from this one where we talk a little bit about the NASA assistant. Uh, it's it, pretty easy to go through the pages. Uh, I think it'll be helpful for those of you that might be using this review as something of a guide. So uh, we'll look for that video next, but for now, we've talked about uh, the helicopter that we're using for the review so you can know what kind of equipment we used in coming up with our conclusions. And you know, uh, uh, you should have a pretty good idea of how to set up the DJI NASA on your helicopter. If, if helicopters come with guidance as to where you should be putting these parts, uh, by all means, if they've done the homework for you, then go ahead and follow that. Uh, if you have to lay it out yourself, just make sure you're not piling things on top of each other. You're providing a little bit of room for things to breathe. And um, you certainly don't want wires bent like that, bent too far over or wedged up against something because those wires will eventually break, cause your system to fail and uh, probably cause a crash. All right, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.